Another thing we can do is we can work on um, interesting surfaces, interesting shaped uh, pieces of paper. You could work on um, envelopes and stick those in. Um, I've got some parcel labels. They're a little bit shiny on one side and they're a little bit rougher on the other. So I'm going to turn them around to work on the rough side. Um, I haven't worked on these yet, so I have no idea how they're going to respond to getting wet, but we shall learn together, won't we? Okay, I think these were just from the range, um, I believe. Now I'm gonna have some interesting marks on the back now because I've just moved it. Now that's rather in the middle, so we'll bring this this one down here a little bit. And I can get some more bits on there. Um, what I might do is add a little bit of water up here to see what happens. It's very, very wet at the moment. I'm just going to work on the one, um, just because otherwise you'll be here all day, won't you? Okay, so I'm going to try and add some more water here so it actually goes thinner as it goes up there, some interesting patterns coming. Um, shall we sprinkle a little bit of salt on it? Why not? Let's put a little bit of salt on it. Okay, so we'll just put this as regular table salt. Um, you can use the thicker flakes if you want to, you'll get a very different feel. Now one thing, if you've also uh, got granulation medium, it's a watercolour accessory, don't go rushing out and buying one, just have a go at using it um, if you have got one. If you add it neat to... Love that. If you add it neat, it does some interesting things. <laughs> Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> oh dear. Can you see how it's starting to separate? Now it's just way, way, way too, too much. This is what happens when you work under dress. Okay, right. Let's get a little bit more up here. Make it separate a little bit more. Want to keep try and keep a little bit of clear definition between that and that. You could uh, so this is actually although it is um a medium for um watercolour, clearly it also works with inks as well. Just wondering how I can agitate that without losing everything. I just take up a little bit of that water and then I'll see if I can get it to run back okay what I'm going to do I'm going to leave that to dry because this is this isn't really the watercolor week this is the uh adding pages to your sketchbook some little lines oh look at that so pretty right i'm going to stop fiddling i'm going to leave that and uh, see what it looks like and when they are dry then we'll have a go at attaching them into the book so you could just stick them in and leave the strings so they are purely decorative you could actually uh, stick them in with the string especially if you've got a spiral bound sketchbook you could actually tie them into the spiral bits um, but that would create as you're flicking through your sketchbook obviously completely different size um, different shape so it would add a little bit of dynamism we like a bit of dynamism don't we everybody um, yeah so that's that one I finished my uh, luggage labels so I'll show you these um, 
just done the three. And um, which way around would I have them? I'd probably have that one in the middle, like so. So here you've got the uh, the ink with the salt, and it gives you this nice um, patination. Um, you can see where the granulation medium was added here and here and here, and it's. Uh, made the pigments granulate obviously <laughs> and um, it can be quite effective and here I have worked over the top with the good old glue stick and the ink um, this is where I bruised the paper when it was still damp so it looks a little bit darker I've also added a little bit of oil pastel in places where I felt the uh, the divisions were a little bit too harsh so down here it looks it doesn't look very natural um, I'm quite happy with these uh, but it's like this this area down here what you could maybe do is if you were to sort of go over with what is um, fundamentally dirty water oops it'll just uh, knock that back a little bit so it's not quite so bright oh that's still wet there look it's running um, but that, that might just take the edge off how vibrant they are and create a little bit more depth. But when my sketchbook is eventually dry, which it isn't at the minute, um, I will be able to attach them into my sketchbook. Um, how would I do it? I actually decided so there's my, my three labels. They could obviously just be stuck on like that. They're quite a nice shape, really. Um, I actually decided, though, that I'd rather them the other way up. Especially as it's autumn and you, you get sort of red leaves on trees and what have you. Um, I thought that looked quite effective. So whether that means I need to attach them onto that side if I'm going to actually tie them in. It's a little bit faffy need little fingers for this um so you could tie them in and then you could just let them sort of wiggle around but um you might also want to sort of stick them in it's up to you right i have been looking at my labels and trying to decide um how to display them i've actually decided to put one on each page phase in face sketchbook there is lots of pages uh, that I haven't got around to gessoing over yet and um, I just thought that this is maybe a way I could use these without having to gesso them because the backgrounds are they're quite analogous um, in colour to the labels that I've done but that, that's just too busy so what I was thinking is can I just uh, mount it on something um, to uh, just give it a little bit of breathing space so I was thinking about what sort of colour so I was thinking this is all warm so how does that look uh, just a, a thin bit of paper um, ripped going the, the whole length of the page um, I was thinking about, you know, what sort of different colours can I go for? How would green look? Oh, it's all right, not too bad. Um, and then I thought, what about a bit of a clash? So this is just sugar paper, by the way. Did I say that? Um, oh, heck, that's not very good. Anyway, in the end, I decided upon uh, just a little bit of old um, newsprint. So this is what's been used to protect the... Um, printing blankets uh, when we've been printing and um, our newsprint's one of those papers that it actually tears better one way than the other so you, you can end up with some very irregular shapes so I'm going to actually will that be wide enough I wonder yeah maybe but anyway so what I'm going to do I'm going to just really quickly Get this stuck on obviously if you're not under dress you can uh, make sure that it's a little bit oh I want that edge off there a little bit more precise than this and you don't have to um, get your torn bit of paper the right shape first time there's no reason why you can't if it's not quite wide enough there's no reason why you can't then 
add another bit to it. Really doesn't matter. Okay. So just pop that on there just to sort of straighten that bit up a bit. And then I'm going to stick this on. Obviously, you don't. You could stick it on with, uh, I don't know, masking tape, so it's removable. Um, you could just tie it in and then let it flap around. But I'm going to stick mine in. I'm going to pop it there. Get a little bit. Uh, oops. <laughs> slide in. Um, right. Okay. And then this. What I'm going to do. I'm just going to. Um, stick it in place with a little bit of masking tape just to hope that the pressure of the book being shot on top of it makes it stay in that little curl. Now these little taggy raggy bits you can um, leave them hanging out if you want to. You could uh, take a pair of scissors and cut carefully along the edge so it's crisp. You could let it dry and then rest that on a cutting board and actually cut it so it, it, it's really really precise but I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors quickly and not worry too much about it okay so there you go and there's the other two that I did okay so that is how I decided to stick my labels in in the end <laughs> 